It can't stop once I start going. Stings. <laughs> David, you know, I was thinking, I was thinking about pre-roll banter for this episode. And because that's always good. Yeah. Always little forced foreplay is always great. <laughs> Everyone loves it. I think that's when like, you go down, you do your one minute of duty and you come back up. Everyone really appreciates in, that. In, in the love books, I think 101 is make sure that role play is forced. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, I want you or foreplay, to be, role play, whatever. It's fine. Role play, foreplay, it's all relative. I mean, the, I, I want you to not really want to do it. That's what really gets me hard. <laughs> Just really revs my engine. <laughs> I want you to do it for me, but definitely not for you. All right. So, so in thinking of 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 this episode, I was like, "What? What's a topic I could talk about with David? Anything on your mind, David? Anything?" Oh, or so you didn't find the thing that you were searching for? No, in your I back couldn't. Pocket. So now I'm putting all the pressure on you. That's fine. I uh, go for it. I, I had a manic. I had a manic Monday on a Thursday. I. Uh, I took a little pre-workout. <laughs> I was hating my life because I was forcing myself to work out. You know, it's not it's not easy. Every day is not easy. So, you know, you're you got to It ain't easy being breezy. I'm going to fucking get in there and I'm going to fucking do it. And it's going to hurt a lot. And at the end of it, I'm going to be happy I did it. But I don't want to do this right now. And our video editor and good friend Carlos Plaza of Carlos Plaza Drums um, called me up just at the... Uh, most inopportune time for him, probably. Um, <laughs> and I decided See, that's to, why you don't cold call even you, friends. You feel it you out. Send the text first and say, "Hey." Actually, I think we might have been texting a, a little bit back and forth. Oh, so he thought he had. And the so green he light. thought he th- give it a green light anyway. Um, <laughs> so he green lighted it, and I was like, you know, just in one of those moods where I just kind of like wanted to take a bite out of something, and he's like, "Hey, so what's going on, man?" It's like. Fucking, you know, life is good. You know, I'm exactly where I want to be exactly at this moment. <laughs> you know, I'm exactly where I should be. That's the way I, we should all hope. I definitely didn't want to be on tour right now. I definitely didn't want to be rocking out metal shows and throwing devil horns up to thousands of fans. I, I'm here now. I'm. You at, know, when you say I'm things like that, it makes, oh, me, it gets better. It, it, it makes me think that the podcast hold, is a second hold rate. Hold uh, on, I'm not done yet thing for you i'm not he i'm like listen i'm kind of hurt right now Liz, oh, it's good it gets worse for you buddy <laughs> <laughs> so i'm i'm running down the rails he's like oh are you okay dude i was like no no i'm fine i totally rather make dick jokes on a podcast than rock out with my cock out i was saying it in jest obviously because i do love this program but i just kind of wanted to like give him like the the melancholy like mm, life sucks bro every day but you day. wanted to Put a little pepper on it. I wanted to put a little, a little, a little zazz, spice, a little, a little, a little splash a little spice on it. To it. I just kind of, he's like, "Are you? Will you call me later?" I was like, oh, "I don't know. You know, maybe I'll be just so maybe steeped be, in every. Maybe we'll be hanging from all a my dreams, from my rafters. All my dreams <laughs> coming true is just. I don't know if I can work you in there at this particular time. But uh, no, it's all in jest. I. Uh, so that was that was uh it was good for me. It cleared my head, and I had a pretty decent workout after that because I was kind of chuckling to myself that I got under his skin that much. So, All right. Well, now that you've uh, told your co-host how much you uh, despise this endeavor, oh. and then you've also told your video editor slash lifelong <laughs> friend uh, that you hate his guts. Should and I have to planned die, this out a little uh, bit better? You want to jump into this episode? I mean, now's a good time. Do you want me to count this one in? Uh, I mean, you seem to be on some sort of accounting roll as of late. All right. So I guess have at it. One, two, three, motherfucker. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Weapons of Meme Destruction podcast episode nineteen. Wow, we didn't even discuss that. We didn't. That, even, I mean, that, okay. like this is like I know stuff. There's now. been a couple of emails to to. I mean, not I to know. rob you of your total. Some lore, passive but. aggressive emails. You know the you know those emails that start with as previously stated. 
Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that's like those are the good ones. <laughs> that's the professional way of saying, "Listen, dickhead." <laughs> those are the good ones. Um, so wmdpodcast.com backslash nineteen is the place to be, um, because we want you to jump in the show notes page, want you to come to the website, want you to join the. We email just want list. you to come. Just come on over, baby. I mean, I'm I'm glad you you said the follow up sentence. As, as Christina Aguilera, what would I be referencing other than that? Uh huh. Um, anyway, so that's where to find us, but you can also find us on iTunes, Stitcher, uh, podcast addict, uh, all the other podcasts. Uh, you just got to rub us the right way. YouTube. If you want to check out Carlos's videos, uh, kill, slaying it over there on YouTube. If you want to be with me, uh, there's a price to pay. All right, Christina, relax. Um, so those are literally the only two. No, it's not. Want to get dirty. So anyway, <laughs> ju- jumping into the episode, and you know what? I-, I had a thought when I was coming over to the studio today, David. I hope you had more than one, but go ahead, continue. <laughs> I this have, one stuck out of all the others. I-, I have I have thoughts in bunches; they cluster, and then I and then I just go brain dead for hours. At That's a time. fine. Like you have a flow of uh, dude. Welcome to the party. I'm like sitting here thinking, like, was Duran Duran like? Did they name their band that because like? They were in a Duran, and then they wanted to be in two of them at the same time. Like, did it have a prefix, a suffix? Like, what is a Duran? First of all, I know what a Dural is. What's a Duran? All right, we're we're already we're, this is way too early in the episode to be off the rails. Can we can we continue? I was just saying, like that's that's the thought that flows through my head. And anyway, like, oh, I need to pay that bill, and then it's back to the Duran Duran shit. Ah. Uh. That's what I'm, I was. I was helping you. So anyway, the thought that I had on the way over here, not knowing at all what the theme of the pre-roll banter was going to be. Right. So I mean, but they they match perfectly. Sometimes my, shit happens. My thought was based on what we were going to discuss in this episode. You know, I don't. Not that you should give up on the dream of uh, you know rocking people's faces off with metal and being in the entertainment industry. But I got to say, man. For all this Illuminati, you got to sell your soul, got to sell your soul to the devil to become famous thing. I don't think that's, I don't think Dude, that, I've tried that multiple times. I don't the devil, think. The devil's cell phone must just be blowing up constantly. Like, dude, hey, hold on. Again. But, but I think, I think people get this all wrong. Uh-huh. I think you got to sell your brain. Like you got to have uh, what's, what's that? What's that brain surgery where they like poke your brain with needles? A, a, lo- a lobotomy? A lobotomy. That's not yes. poking your brain with needles. <laughs> it's shoving a needle up into your fucking cortex and scrambling it around. I mean, it's poking your brain with needles. No, I'm, I'm they not don't a million miles removed from poking, the actual procedure. Poking. Don't they? Okay, okay. Do you poke your girlfriend or do you hmm <laughs> your girlfriend? They hmm <laughs> <laughs> your brain in a lobotomy. They okay. get up there and they're screaming. All right. Anyway, they so, take the perfectly fried egg and they scramble it around. And so when I when I it. saw this exchange, an exchange that happened over Twitter from a famous person in the entertainment industry, a famous person. Don't worry, dear listener, you will know the names. Oh, we, there's a big reveal. There's there's blue check marks all over the place, so we have no problem, oh. you know, shouting people out. Oh my god, thank you. Um, I think like these people in Hollywood and stuff, like they gotta have a, a, a lobotomy to be able to. Holly weird to, to well, function. I mean, yeah, but they also, it's I mean, so fucking stupid. Well, you have to virtue signal and virtue signaling. You can be dirty at times. Sometimes you have to call out the 13 year old that thinks that maybe we should have Medicare for all. Like, listen, I totally agree with you. Little 13 year old. Maybe you should run the country someday. I eat Greta Thunberg. It was just a different, different topic. Right, right. I want to know her better. Is there like a documentary or something like that, like on Netflix, I, that I could better know Greta? Greta. I I could not possibly. There is. I was, I was. Go see the Greta Thornburg. Uh, oh, Thur- have you Thunberg? watched it? No, you're just aware no. That it I was exists. just aware of it. It's like I couldn't imagine a bigger waste of your time. No, I was saying <laughs> a bigger like star to go to varnish Netflix with their. Uh, Okay, let's their good graces. Let's go ahead and hop into the episode. Oh, you don't want to can, we, you can don't, we do that? You don't want to just talk about Greta? No. Okay. I'd really rather not. Okay, fine. All right. Have it so, your way. Uh let, let me set the stage for you here. So so as you may know, there is a recount going on in Georgia. Now everybody's focused on As the, previously stated on on the tr- not in this episode. Call, but, it's a callback to what we were talking about earlier as previously stated. 
the emails. You, you get it. Let's keep going. I mean, that is a bit of a stretch. To, let's, call, let's call back. All right. <laughs> anyway, you back. may have heard that there's a Trump-Biden recount going on in Georgia, but there's also another recount. Um, two senatorial races. Uh, David Perdue versus John Ossoff, uh, Perdue being the Republican, Ossoff being the Democrat. Um, and also uh, Kelly Loeffler is trying to keep her seat, again, uh, Republican uh, versus her Democratic challenger, which is uh, Ralph Warnock. Now, well, did you practice those names before? That's a uh, that felt like I cold, mean, it felt like a cold. Like a cold read, but you nailed it. They're I feel not, like you nailed they're, it. Those aren't super hard names to to do. So anyway, basically those those uh, sen- two senatorial races in Georgia are going to a runoff in January fifth because the counts were so close between them that basically you know they're going to revote and you know figure out who's going to win those two Senate seats. And those Senate seats matter for the sake of, you know, Biden being in office. Does he control all of Congress or just the House? Uh, Is there going to be still a Republican controlled Senate? And that matters for a lot of the different initiatives that are going to, you know, if he if if Democrats control both the House and the Senate, basically the entire Democratic agenda can be passed with impunity. Um, And then, you know, Biden is just going to rubber stamp it from from the Oval Office. So these races are kind of important. Um, And so the importance of those races uh, was actually discussed on Twitter between two pretty famous blue check marks. You've probably heard of them. And we're going to quote them word for word in their tweets just to kind of give you the context of what they were talking about. So because they are part of the lexicon of society as we live in. Yeah. I mean, both both individuals and actually there's a third individual that will come in later. Oh, he wasn't invited, but he came no, in he, strong. No, he came in such as the cesspool And when Twitter. you hear who it was, you won't be surprised that he invited himself to this <laughs> conversation. Um, so the, the I two- feel like he has to invite himself to most conversations. Yeah. I feel like that guy I mean, does. when you're like a, a Q lister in Hollywood, that's hey, kind of what you gotta let, do. Hey, fucking, if I could even make the alphabet. And uh, I'm not talking about the vending machine alphabet either, like the A-A-B-B-C-Cs. Okay. And anyway, to, to the to the, to the the tweets. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to the tweets. <laughs> to the tweets. Um, oh, to the tweets. So the the two main protagonists in this story that that's that provide the fodder for this episode protagonist are, and antagonist are are Mark Cuban and John Legend. Whoa. So regarding these two Senate races, Mark Cuban had this to say: For those considering donating to reps or Dem, Republicans or Dem, Democrats in the Georgia Senate runoffs, can you please reconsider and donate that money to your local food bank? and organizations that can help those without food or shelter. Let's put Americans in need above politics. Now, let's just pause right there before we get to the second protagonist. Um, you say David. protagonist. I mean, I, I, there's got in every story, there's a pro and an anti. I know, but I... I mean, I, I figured, I guess, Tom Arnold jumping in there later. Oh, a little bit well, of, fucking spoiler alert. I know, I'm sorry. I hope you listen to 17 minutes into this podcast okay. before you listen to the 10th minute. Okay, Fuck. yes, no, you're right. Cuban is the protagonist because in our telling of this story, right. he's the one we agree with. And then, you know, his... For the most part, right. obviously. Yeah. Okay, so David, David, yes. why don't you jump in here and tell me what exactly was wrong with Mark Cuban's tweet? Can you find something? Find something wrong? Somebody says, you know, give money to people that are actually in need as opposed to Senate campaigns. Can well, because I'm something? a cold-hearted uh, piece of shit, I, I don't care about the needy. <laughs> like, I need just as much as more than most ah, people do. So you're playing right into the hands of the antagonist. Right. I, I like to play the villain. Listen, put it this way. The villain, it, watch any movie, it stands to reason the villain has the most fun during the movie right up until the end. And then it all falls to <laughs> shit. But all the way up until, super fun. That's like, they're good. usually just doing whatever the fuck they want to whoever the fuck they want to do it to. And they're just having a go. And then all of a sudden, this dickhead that I broke his back like five minutes ago. And now he wants to show back up and shoot me with a fucking bicycle cannon in the chesticles. Fuck. 
that's you know that's actually a pretty good analogy about everything working out for you until the very end. Right. It was, I, I, I almost to, had it. I, I want you. To, I want you to put a pin in that because we're gonna. That's let's circle. That's a steaming you want a bowl of foreshadowing right you there. You want to. You want to circle back to that one. So the antagonist Catch here, back in ten. Uh, improperly named as the second protagonist by me earlier, um, is another blue check mark. You may have heard of him. His name is John Legend. Ugh. So. He feels the need to just like, I mean, if there was a virtue signaling Olympics, this guy might win it. He jumps in on Mark Cuban's tweet and says, I get that politics is annoying and contentious, but the bottom line is that the Senate flipping would be far more impactful than a food bank donation. We need massive stimulus and aid to individuals and small businesses. Why would we need massive stimulus, by the way? Why would we need massive stimulus after a massive stimulus check that was sent out to everybody else in the foregone conclusions, 1200 bucks for everybody? Yeah. That solved everyone's problems. We'll get there. Okay. Uh, we need massive stimulus and aid to individuals and small businesses. Government needs to do this. Charity isn't sufficient. So say the sophisticates through their mouthpiece, John Legend. Now, uh, this just from a couple the mouthpiece more, that wrote tonight. A couple more. I'll follow. give you everything tonight. I think that's. I mean, at, at this point, at this point, when you have the following he has, and you say something so naive, ignorant, and stupid, would you call him an I, ignoramus? I could care less about his a stupidiot. His, his uh, I don't entertain. I, I, I literally had to look that up. Point. I was pretty sure that was him. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, Mark fires back. Well then, well then let's, let's go all the way, John. Stop donating to charity. Give that money to politicians because one party will solve all of our problems. Come on, John. There is a point of diminishing returns on political ad spend. There are no diminished returns when it comes to feeding the hungry. So David, I return to you. Mark oh. Cuban's follow-up tweet. Find anything objectionable there? Well, it seems like he actually cares for people, which is disgust. I mean, as we as we were saying before, it just disgusts me that he cares about his fellow man. Well, well like, ugh, let, let, let's ugh. Let, let's look at it just on the surface level and not not dig very deep about what Mark Cuban had I'm to say. I'm so reply superficial. You don't have to ever tell me about that. diminishing returns in terms of political ad spend, regardless of whether Republicans or Democrats win. Half of the half of the the money spent, the side that loses. Is going to be wasted money, right? Because they question. didn't win the seat. I've got a question. Um, so you want to give money, John Legend, referring back to you, to the same thing that got us here in the first place, and your solution to solve the problem is to give the thing that led us right to this spot that we're at arguing, um, you want to give that thing more money, expecting it to cure the uh, the problem that it created itself. Is that is that what I'm is that what I'm led to believe? I'm to be led to believe. Oh Jesus Christ! I just brain farted myself there. Um, did I go off the rails on that one? I feel I like I feel like if you throw more money at a government to expect them to also feed the hungry, but they weren't doing it in the first place, I feel like your argument falls on deaf ears right then and there or it should it should yeah i mean listen let's okay I, I i went maybe i went too far earlier when i said when when i added stupidity onto the list of adjectives to describe uh john legend let me just stick with one okay one that's not quite as you know laced with criticism Ignoramus. No, no, no. Let's well, okay. Naive. Let's let's just say naive. naivety. Na naive ignorance. We all have ignorance on a lot of different subjects. We're sure, all naive about sure. a lot of different things. So let's let's just stick there. And I'm let's, naive to the needs of others. I don't care about you. It's just all about me. Let's just let's just focus in particular on on Legend's initial response to Cuban, where he says that government needs to do this. Government is the one that needs to provide massive stimulus and aid to individuals and small business. Ooh. And David, you kind of you kind of jumped the shark on this one. Well, sorry. And no, no, and to your credit, we're I gonna, mean, it was the only logical thing that I could come up with. We're, we're gonna double back on it. So again, I'm going back to Duran Duran right now. 
<laughs> so the stimulus that you mentioned earlier, most of you that haven't been living under a rock for the last six to eight months probably remember the CARES Act, you know, which was passed in March. And I think it was about like 2.2 trillion, something like that. It was over 2 trillion. And uh, the ostensible purpose, there's that word again. Fuck. There's that word again. Vocab <laughs> word. Of the, has it, Carlos, it's, check it. It's already been, it's already it's, been a vocab already, word of the oh, day before. It can't be again. Shit. The, the memes already know what ostensible means by this, by, by now. So Jesus, but it's such a it's like when you just drop it, like I feel like other people with monocles look over and go, well, I say you're right. Did someone just say us? You're right. We might have that way. We might have, and we <laughs> hope that we have new listeners to episode 19 that haven't been before. Okay, so it can't be the vocab word of the day because we've already used it. Okay. So anyway, let's just take a little trot through the care the 2.2 trillion dollar CARES Act. And let's talk about, quote unquote, uh, and John Legend. Dane, may I? A turkey trot? Because we're so close to Thanksgiving. I think we should. A turkey trot to this next topic. I mean, this might even be. I think it was just. This, when we release I mean, this, you, it's the Monday realize, after Thanksgiving. Yeah, right? this, this is coming out after Thanksgiving. Right? Well, let's just turkey trot on over there, you know. So let's just let, let me trot through and just give you a couple stats on the CARES you didn't Act. Say turkey trot. Let, let me turkey trot Thank through you. the CARES Act. <laughs> through the CARES Act and, and let's just examine John Legend's premise that government is the one that needs to, you know, fix this problem. You know, we need Democrats controlling the Senate so that everything can be hunky dory. So, you know, you remember that CARES Act as as David was referencing earlier, sent twelve hundred dollars uh, to each American citizen. Um, well, billions, billions worth of $1,200 checks were sent to dead people. I mean, that's not even, I mean, that's not a joke. That's not a conspiracy theory. That's a, a, a tangible fact. And we will link to the study that showed that in the show notes page. That's why you need to come to WMDpodcast.com backslash 19. Listen, check out that show. Dying notes page. is expensive. I don't know if you know that. But unless you just want to be thrown in a ditch somewhere, you're going to have a lot of cup in like bills that come in at post mortem. So here's a here's another stat on the on the CARES Act. So in, in addition to billions being sent to dead people, stat me, bro. Uh, the CARES Act also supercharged unemployment to the point that people who got unemployment under the CARES Act were being actually being paid more than they were being paid to work. So, I mean, what incentive does that have? What does that give anybody to, to to actually try to find work during that time? And and as a matter of fact, Dane, should we should we also? Can I just interject and say that we should also throw in the uh, UBI to this topic? No, we shouldn't. No, this is not. I mean, that's life. an entire episode in and of itself. Well, no, no, no. I'm just saying, like, that's a perpetual program. Let's to let's get, throw to this in. People let's money throw to the, stay the, home. Re, well, what I'm saying is, refer what we're everything we're about to say here. Refer that to the UBI. The incentivization is what I'm saying. Right, right. I mean, I mean, it's obvious. Like, if it's you like, if you I go to like a national were, park, they specifically say they have don't, signs. Don't feed the don't fucking feed animals. the animals because they become dependent on the food. <laughs> exactly. You get them. Well, that's what I'm saying. And then like, when you leave and don't feed them the I food, feel like they this die. Is like this is like just the tip, just for a second, just to see how it feels about UBI. Okay, so the but super the supercharged unemployment under the CARES Act that expansion actually lost twenty six billion dollars more. Then the entire unemployment benefits handed out under in, in 2019. Hey, Dane, for us stupid people. Imagine you, that for a can second. Can you repeat that one more time and real slow? The unemployment benefits extended under the CARES Act actually ended up costing $26 billion more than all unemployment ben- benefits given out in, in the fiscal year 2019 by itself. 26 billion. Now, when you talk about, you know, a federal budget that's in the 14 trillion dollar range, you know, you think, oh, 26 billion, what's that? That's not the point. That's Friday. The, the, the point is, whatever percentage of the total federal budget comes in the form of unemployment benefits, just in the CARES Act alone, the $2.2 trillion spent to try to alleviate the problems of coronavirus, which are 
totally self-imposed by government lockdowns at all levels of government. Um, spent twenty six billion dollars more than the entire year of twenty of fiscal year twenty nineteen uh, unemployment benefits. So again, talking about waste uh, in terms of of government handouts. Now you might say, but Dane, the uh, the um, the the payment protection program of the CARES Act was the really that was the big that was the big thing. That was what was so important that we needed to keep people that were already employed. And so basically what this what this amounted to was grants to employers if they followed certain rules, you know, kept people on payroll during coronavirus, all that kind of stuff, that they would get these grants from taxpayers that they wouldn't have to pay back. Now they were called loans, but they're not really loans because they don't have to pay them back as long as they follow the rules and keep people on the payroll. So you say, well, Dan, what about that? Didn't that leave a bunch of people employed that otherwise might not have been? And so that's a net positive. Um, well, a couple problems with that. First of all, uh, a lot of the, well, not a lot of, all of the companies that got the PPP loans, um, <laughs> David, stifle yourself. <laughs> PPP. <laughs> um, uh, PPP loan eligibility was simply based on the honor system. So it wasn't about whether a company qualified for the loans or not. They just said, hey, yeah, we're going to self-certify. We qualify the, for the loans. Hey, federal government, can you give us uh, a bunch of money? Uh, and I, I'll give you a direct quote from a federal watchdog group after the PP loans were handed out, said, and I quote, there are strong indicators of widespread fraud in the PPP. And you might ask, well, Dane, how widespread? According to MIT economist David Otter, he estimated that the PPP only saved about 2.3 million jobs. And when you factor in how much money was sent out through PPP, that comes out to about $224,000 per job. Now, I don't know about you, David. I'm not a rich man. I don't make anywhere near $224,000. And I can promise you that the jobs saved of those 2.3 million were sa that were saved didn't make anywhere near $224,000 per year Dane? when the economy was normal. Dane? Would you venture to say that that's probably a fair Dane, statement? I am so furious with you right now that we didn't apply for our PPPPPPPP loan. I know. Um, for this we podcast, could be right? Setting in a lavish studio. Could you imagine? Fraught with loose women. Um, could you imagine? We could have just. Meeting our every need. We could have just self certified and said, hey, feeding us this podcast grapes, pays us 250K per year. Fanning Pay up, us. Government. <laughs> fanning us with palms from the nearest palm tree so they're fresh. I don't want to be palmed with a fucking. You know, degenerate, I fell off because I was rotten palm. Give me a fresh palm, you know, like a coconut from, again, a fresh coconut that just fell from the tree, thusly meaning it's ripe coconut water and sitting in a $200,000 studio that we can't possibly afford, that we need the government to keep telling us that Corona is very dangerous and we need to stay inside so we can apply for the next PPP, 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 PPP loan and get another two hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Well, and so I mean, and and that's that's I, I hope we have driven the point home. And even before we get to the rest of Mr. Legend's tweets, mm. the fact that he thinks that government is the only vehicle to fix anything at all let alone just focusing on the specific thing of we happen to be in a global pandemic and a lot of people are laid off work with lockdowns and everything else, that he's being hopelessly naive when he's calling for more of the same. All of this waste, this fraud, and this abuse of the taxpayers that happen as a result of the CARES Act, Legend seems to think, no, Nothing to see here, folks. Dang. Let's have another round of that. Dang. Another round that we're guaranteed to get as long as Democrats control the Senate. Dang. What? Do you do you think that's his real last name? I I don't care. Do do you, do you think do you think he's really John Legend, or do you think you changed that? 
He sees John Lipchinsky. This is the, I don't know what other episode you've said it on, but you've used the name Lipchinsky again. Do John, you know a person by with John, the name, last John, name, Lipchinsky? John Liebowitz. Do you know a person with the last name Liebowitz? John, John, John Goldstone. Do you know? I'm not going to entertain this line of thought any further. Kershaw. Jonathan Kershaw. Can I get to John's follow-up tweet? Jonathan. Let's just call him John. Take the guesswork out. Fine. Have it your way. John Lipchinski. Go ahead. All right. So John follows up, you know, when to, to refresh your memory, when, uh, when Mark asked him, like, come on, John. Stop we, being stupid, John. Should we just eliminate Stop. charity entirely and just leave it up to politicians? So, so John replies with, listen, man. He didn't say listen, man. The quote starts here. Quote, I believe the Democrats will do more to help the country recover. Period. I don't think it's even close. Mitch will be obstructionist and try to find ways to make Biden a one-term president, just as he promised and failed to do with Obama. But I don't know if we've reached the point of diminishing returns for donating to the runoffs in Georgia. It's hard to know. But I plan to err on the side of donating to help Ossoff and Warnock win. I hope it works. It will be better for the country. So let's focus on those first two lines of, of, of Legend's tweet where he says, I believe the Democrats will do more to help the country recover. This is grounded in... Uh, We'll link to the callback episode in the show notes page. We've discussed this before, the meme that's out there that, you know, Democrats, that, oh, well, this was the Alyssa Milano episode. Do you remember which that one was? Was that 14 or 15? Jesus Christ. I don't know. I think anyway, it'll it'll be in the show notes page. Anyway, the, the we didn't do a specifically Alyssa Milano. Yes, we did. Alyssa Mil- Melissa? Alyssa Milano. Melissa? No, Alyssa Milano, and you made the same mistake in the episode. Alyssa? Her name's Alyssa. Ugh. Yes. Anyway. Sorry, I didn't watch Charmed. Not anyway, anyway, the meme of that episode was, you know, Democrats are all love, Republicans are not, and so she couldn't understand why anybody would be Republican. Right. Oh, I remember. And and that's 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 what Legend's getting to Hashtag here. It's all coming back. Right? right now. Because, because he says, Selena. I believe the Democrats will do more to help the country recover. Right. He's he's saying that, you know, one party is, I guess, inherently or at least obviously better than another party. Right. Clearly. Does that seem to be what, what he's saying? Well, there? it's that moral high ground that we we discussed in the last episode. You know, it's, they're they're always altruistic. They're always helping out somebody else. They're always thinking about the little man helping them out. Right. So. Don't let's, donate to charity. Let's. A, we'll get that shit on the back end. Let's. Let's examine that. And this is to to your point earlier in the episode mm-hmm. where you were talking about the antagonist has everything going for him all, all the way up until the very end. Sure. And at the end of the movie, you're like, oh, shit. Dude, the Joker Snap back, was bruh. slaying it in the dark night. He's like, I'm doing pretty good. So within the confines of this episode, we're about to smack John Legend with oh. some... With some antagonists, it's always when the it's always ins. when the guy that you didn't see coming tries to help you out. Right now, right, go for it. So, there's been a study done on a follow up to the CARES Act called the Heroes Act. And by the way, just brief side note: which heroes were involved? Was it just Ant Man, or was it like Tony Stark? Was Bri- it Batman? Was it Superman? Brief side note: here is this is something I heard from from Tom Woods. Was but it I, at least Sully Solenberger? No. Fuck. Something I heard from Tom Woods, but that every time I see it, it pops into my head. I'm like, this is absolutely true. Anything that passes Congress, you know, they have these cute little names, right? The Patriot Act, the CARES Act, the HEROES Act, right? They, they come up with these, these interesting oh. little acronyms to show like how good they are, right? And the point that he was making is- MK Ultra. Is is basically whatever the title of the bill is that passed, you can assure yourself with 100% certainty that whatever the title says that it it's going to do, it does the exact it does opposite. The exactly. opposite. It's like it's the, it's the old bait and switch. You throw them a little thing here and, <laughs> and then you get them over there. You got Where, them. Where'd New York David come from? That I don't fucking way know. Way out of left field. He's coming from somewhere. 
He's definitely not from Wrigley, you know what I mean? I'm from the Bronx with them Bronx Bombers. Then right. stripes. Anyway. So anyway. Fuck the Yankees. Anyway, back to back to John's point about the Democrats will do more for the country. So um this may have, you know, not been in your headlines because it didn't didn't pass and make it to the president's desk. But in October, voting strictly upon uh I like up, to call upon it party term. lines. The the House passed what's called the Heroes Act, and it was basically a seven hundred billion dollar uh, extension of the CARES Act. Another, in addition to the two trillion already spent, another seven hundred billion uh, House Democrats wanted to pass to give to state and local governments. Um, Dang, this uh, is going to solve all our for problems, COVID right? relief. This right. is going to solve all. And of only the another seven hundred billion, and then we're go- then we're golden, Pony Boy. Don't need any more. So this passed uh, uh, in October, and um, like I said, al- along party lines. Now, an interesting little factoid about this Heroes Act Uh-oh. is there was three hundred and fifty million dollars of it went to the fifty richest zip codes in the country. Now you ask, yes, Dane, how rich are we talking here? Well, hold on. A study was done. The, yeah, for, for the questions, can you like can you pitch it over to me, and I'll just. Yes, Dane. How rich are these are these places? Can I can I do that? That's a good question, David. I'm going to answer that for Thanks, you. Thanks, buddy. Uh, a study done by OpenTheBooks.com found that that the zip codes that some of this money was earmarked to go to the the 350 million dollars was earmarked to go to had average incomes of between. So the people that lived in those zip codes had an in, had incomes between two hundred and sixty thousand dollars per year. And five hundred and twenty thousand dollars per year. Uh, that's that you know that were they like Walmart workers? Were they greeters? <laughs> so, um, that's yeah, pretty, I think that's exactly. That, I what think they that's were. going right. We're also making Subway sandwiches. I think so. Oh, they were yeah. double dipping. That's what that's double what it was dipping. Going to. They're on their offs on their off days. They'd go to Subway and really rake in the. Big so dollars. let me, let me give you a. Cu- Did uh, you know that there's there artists? Yeah. Did you they're, know they're artists in some way? Yeah, they're sandwich artisans. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a that's a pretty low price to pay for an artist, right? You know, have you seen Piss Christ? Do you know what you know what that went for? Because I don't know, I don't either. But I've seen like splotches on a fucking white ca- canvas, and I know it went for millions. I'm like, graphic. I didn't say bodily fluid splotches. I just said like splotches. Okay. Like they just threw a, they threw like a thing at it okay. and it, they're like that's art. It depicts like the absence of the thing of ethereality. Okay. And then they're like, yeah, I'll pay you a million dollars for your I mean, good good for them. I mean, they'll pay anything. So what I'm saying is like maybe minimum wage a little bit above for the subway sandwich maker. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying that the, the CARES acts they got to the root. They said we're on these we're, we're subway on, sandwich we're on, on, bikers. On, we're on the Heroes Act now. Fucking dough. We're on the Heroes Act now. That's what I said. I said the Heroes Act. <laughs> All right. So just pulling out a couple of these zip codes for you. Um, Wellesley, Massachusetts. Malibu, California, you know, you know, all all the people on the real low end oh, of the fuck, socioeconomic how are they make ladder it out? that need some money. All oh, these poor people in bastards. Malibu, you know. Um, and then old Greenwich, Connecticut. Call now, back to 10. You know Navy. that yachts cost a lot of money. Massachusetts. They have to pay for that. Massachusetts, California, and Connecticut. Um, I don't see any connection between what would you, any what of would those. You, what would you consider those states? There's I'm not one think. thing that comes to mind. Nothing? Maybe, maybe like bear population? Maybe? <laughs> maybe? Like now, how many black bears are in these ge- Malibu? I hear cougars are just rampant. Mountain lions, I hear they're crazy. So crazy up. So go, going back, going back to John's tweet about you know Democrats helping the country more. You know, I just want you to keep in mind that on the Heroes Act, which again passed along party lines, and again going back to what started this whole thing. If Democrats also controlled the Senate, you can, can you can count on the Heroes Act being revoted on, passing the House again, this time passing the Senate, and then having a Democratic president to rubber stamp it. 
Um, we have Democrats, the party of the common man, uh, passing bills that are handing out hundreds of millions of dollars to some of the richest zip codes in the country. You and you have to ask yourself, John, um, who exactly is the party of love helping? Alone. Right? Do you ever feel alone? Because I do. No, but you're going to feel pretty damn good if you're uh, in some of these, you know, party of love strongholds. And uh, but John no, gets what his I'm way. saying is like, again, it's the CARES Act. And it sounds, how could you ever vote against the CARES Act? How could you ever vote against the HERO Act? How could you ever vote against the Patriot Act? Right. So you're like, yeah, absolutely. I'll forego a little bit more of my freedoms for people to feel safe and secure. And then you realize that they didn't use that thing for your benefit. They used it for their benefit. I capitalized T-H-E-Y. Callback. T-H-E-I-R. Because I know how to use there, there, there. Their benefits. good for you. Like, again, if you're relying on the government to bail you out of this, you've already made the biggest mistake to survive this catastrophe. I mean, anything. Correct. Which so, goes back to John which, Legend's... Well, well, which I, goes I, back to his, 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 his summation... I'm sorry. There's a loose weasel in here. We'll we'll find it and we'll we'll kill it and we'll snuff it out. <laughs> um, uh, we, if you rely on the thing that doesn't care about you to get you out of the thing that it got you into in the first place, you've already made the biggest mistake of your life. And his solution is to, to do more of it. Right. Like right. your argument that sounds altruistic in, through in and throughout and that your virtue is signaling back to all your other people. It's what got us here in the fucking first place. Right. And the thing that doesn't care about you, let's give it more money exactly what it wants so it can care about you a little bit less. Right. Why the fuck would I do that? And then and then insult your intelligence, which is what John's trying to do. No, no, don't you understand that Democrats my party, the party is the one that's going to solve all the Earl's problems? Right. Said the cult leader, said every fucking other person that's yeah. ever led anyone right to straight to damnation, said all the people that said, I know the way. No, 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 no. Those charts are wrong. I know that this is the passage to the West Indies. And then all of a sudden, they're not there anymore. So... You know, just just to finish up with John before we 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 oh. jump in on on Tom Arnold because you know he Can just we make him he, he just he just couldn't stay away. You know, John says there is clearly a difference between what a Mitch led Senate will do versus what a Schumer led Senate will do. As much as politics is annoying, this is very high stakes and hugely impactful to the lives of everyday Said Americans. Said the entertainer. So again, on I can guess your fucking voice my, or the voice my, or some rendition of it. My question to you, John, is how many everyday Americans live in Wellesley, Massachusetts, Malibu, Malibu California, and Old Greenwich, Connecticut? Can you tell me? Can you tell me how many $7.25 an hour minimum wage workers live in those zip codes? I'll bet you it ain't that many. Hey, John. Considering how the average income in hey, those John. zip codes is 260 to 520K hey, a year. I mean, come when on, was John. When the last time you had an come artist on. make your sandwich? When was the last time you had a $5 foot long from a true artisan of the craft? My guess is that it was before he got signed to whatever contract he got signed to. And now he's forgotten what it is to be a real human. To, you know, pay bills. Not to have an assistant that monitors all your credit lines, that monitors all your credit scores, that pays all your bills for you. No, 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 no. Like, legitimately looking at your check and saying, okay, well, I can at least pay the electric this week. I can at least pay the mortgage and we're going to be living on top ramen and maybe some processed meat stuffs for the next week until I get the next paycheck. Yeah. When was the last time you so, saw that, John? I mean, and, and let, let's let's think about this, John. 
So the people that are living in those 50 richest zip codes that are getting that big handout, remember that when federal taxes go into the big honeypot that is the federal government's handout under programs like the CARES Act and the HEROES Act, it's all that money is fungible. So basically, when you hand out $350 million to the 50 to the 50 richest zip codes in the country, what you are saying is that the sandwich artisans at Publix in, you know, rural Alabama are subsidizing the lifestyles of people living in Malibu, California. That's the fairness. That's the love of your party, John, that passed, again, along party lines. It's not law yet. The the HEROES Act didn't pass the Republican-controlled Senate in October. But if you get your way and these two Senate races go Democrat and the Democrats ha- happen to control the Senate, you can bet the HEROES Act will be passed in the House again. It'll be has- ha- passed in the Senate and Biden will sign it into law. And your party of love is acting is, is, is asking poor people around the United States to help fund the lifestyles of people living in Malibu, California. By the way. So tell me how that's working out for you, John. Did you say fungible? How it's going to be so much better for the common man if everything goes your way and people don't put money in the in the the hands of the actual poor as Cuban asked you to do directly instead of funding a senatorial campaign and you just go and fund some Democrats to get Did elected. Did you say fungible? Fungible, yes. It's a real word. That's the word of the day. Yep. Not yeah, you got it. You got it. Carlos, backtrack to that minute and then put it there and put a wait for it. Okay. So and then word of the day, fungible to fungibate. <laughs> Not a word. Moving on. Um, we're gonna wrap this episode up with, with Tom Arnold with of probably all people. like you the know, guy that married Roseanne. You. The guy that married Roseanne Barr. So he's clearly a man of very and important. was left by Roseanne Barr, I believe, right? They got divorced. Not sure, but he clearly makes awesome life decisions. Well, he was a fuck. What was that shitty? All of them. That's right. All anyway, of the movies that let's he's in. let's get let's get to Tom Arnold's quote because he decided. You know, he felt like he really had the need to come to Could John Legend's defense be because bygones. there's not about a hundred million John Legends out there, and what I mean by that is everybody who holds the exact same conventional opinion as John Legend does. Ret- you know, repeating it ad nauseum. Tom Arnold felt the need. He had to jump in on this thread and give his two cents. So here's what here's what Tom had to say to Mark Cuban. In the most, God, why is it the we need, people? We need to cut it. Why? Why get, is it the can people? Can we just get through him quick? Why is it the people with the most naivety and ignorance on a subject? The most sarcastic because they've about got the it? least to lose. Like all the fuck that they have to say is just to get attention back. You do realize, and by the way, it's not lost on me. I I'm having a moment of clarity right now. <laughs> I'm glad they come once twice maybe if i'm lucky three times a week so let me grab this one all of this is all of this is just a grab for more attention right all of it cuban said it and he said it altruistically probably just to get people to see his side sure and then or to be a decent su- fucking human being maybe, and saying maybe but let's 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 not pay him more attention than anybody else's do. Let's say that maybe he was trying to let people know that that's the best way that he thinks they should spend their money, which would definitely oh, yeah. help the actually people actually giving a dollar actually to a poor giving person a dollar as to opposed a poor to funneling person. it through a bureaucracy. Well, not a poor person on the corner. Shocking because you can't tell where. No, anyway, you, you it's give, not the, it's you not give, the point. You give your money to a local food shelter. You're giving everybody it to the that tax back onto this and that fights through this is fighting for attention. That's all this is. This is all virtue signaling at its lowest basis form, and it's devoid of logic and it's devoid of rationalism. Let's get to Tom Arnold's vicious vi for fucking attention. Let's go. So what Tommy has to say, let me explain this to billionaire. We 
all caps. He wants to did make. Did you leave out he, he to wants, a billionaire, or did he say no? Two he billionaire? no. He said two billionaire. I mean, it could be the character constraints maybe, of, maybe. Sure, of sure, Twitter, sure, sure, whatever. Sure, sure. I'm not getting into that. Okay. I, I I do want to emphasize where he I does. Just want to make sure that he you just you didn't mischaracterize where him. where he does all caps. So we all caps are the party of feeding people, which is so ironic. But we'll get back there. Shh, let's, let's get on. We there. are the party of feeding people. You all caps are the party of not feeding people. We all caps will use all of our money to flip the Senate so people get all of the food all of the time. That's how we, all caps, put Americans above politics, Mark Cuban. Okay. We got to do a quick rundown Didn't because we? we are already long on this episode. This episode so was apologize. not supposed to be an hour we long. We apologize. But... Didn't we already say that anyone who speaks in absolutes is an absolute idiot? Didn't we already say that? If we haven't, we should have. Okay. Go for it. Anyway, so we are the party of feeding people. Again, hilarious, right? Because Mark Cuban's original tweet was literally, don't give money to a senatorial campaign. Give it directly in the form of food to people who need it. Literally feed people with your dollars. But yet Tom Arnold's going to jump in and say, nope, 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 nope. A dollar feeding somebody is not actually feeding people. A dollar to a senatorial campaign is actually feeding people. See, when people people eat, they don't actually eat. They just eat the things that they weren't eaten before, but the government allowed them to eat it. So like they're eating now because the government allowed them. They eat the celebratory speeches of whatever politician that got elected that we wanted. Oh, nourish me, Obama, with your fucking colloquialisms. (laughs) So, and then, okay, so next clause. So then Arnold then decides to throw Mark Cuban into the camp of Republicans. Which he's by never, saying, never avowed to. You are the party of, of not feeding people. First of all, Mark Cuban has never claimed Republicans. Uh, he didn't in his follow-up reply to Tom Arnold's tweet. As a matter of fact, Mark Cuban would probably be more in the Andrew Yang category of sure. like, you know, maybe I might run as a Democrat, but really I'm all about, you know, Let's have the government give money to people, you know, UBI, that kind of thing, to kind of what David was talking about earlier. Um, but let's finish on this. So Tom Arnold's statement that uh, we will use all of our money to flip the Senate so people get all of the food all of the time. Holy fucking hell. Talk about a meme of the century. All of the food, all of the time. We're That's always it. right all the time, That's forever. It. It's David, over. David, listen. This yes. might be this might be the last podcast episode ever. We didn't make it to 20? We didn't no. make it to 20? No. We've, we, we have solved everything in the world we need. All we need to do is elect politicians and then magically, somehow, I don't know how, but somehow. But all no, no, no. I know how. I know. By ha- by. Tom Arnold's decree, they will always be right and everyone will always be fed. There will never be any So much food will be produced or that of teeth world hunger again. is gone. Gone. Boom. Because apparently, Fuck. apparently electing politicians just completely- That was the final stone on the gauntlet? Yeah. On his gauntlet? Oh my fucking Christ. Elect- Why did we do this David, I, David, I don't know if you know this. Okay. I know your undergrad wasn't necessarily in economics, but the law of supply and demand completely is vitiated by the election of politicians. Didn't you know you elect the right politicians? Democratic supply and demand doesn't exist. Democratic ownership of the House and the Senate and the presidency has never been uh ever never been acquired before. Achieved in the history of always. Never. 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 Oh, wow. It was never achieved other wow. than all the other times that it was. <laughs> other than all those other times, this time though, this time they're going to get oh, it Oh right. yeah, that's right. That's right. You mean as recently as the first two years of Obama's Co- first administration. Correct. Yeah. Other than those times, like they were just about to solve it all. And then all right. of a sudden the Republicans right. got it. Right. And, and actually, I, I think I remember seeing a headline about that. They're when, like, when, we almost had it. When, when, when the, when the, Fuck! When when, <laughs> when when the Democrats had both both Congress 
and the presidency. They had the everlasting I actually, I actually saw a, a, a headline at the time that said that all of the food was produced for people all of the time. Right. You saw a headline too, right? I saw it. I saw it. There Perfect. is no more world hunger ever. Perfect. And Perfect. then all of a sudden the Republicans was like, well, people are fucking hungry again. Shit. Perfect. Perfect. Shit. We had it. So. And we fumbled the ball on the one yard line. So. I mean, I, I would like to I would like to tie this up with something. There's no tie. For you know, this. really silver liney, really just put like, a bow on it. This is a Jeep Grand Cherokee on Christmas morn. Just put a fucking bow on it. I hope that what you that what you've taken from this episode is <sighs> to definitely take your political leanings from celebrities because they are so intelligent with their positions that they espouse to everybody else to believe because they wrote a shitty song once and definitely weren't in a myriad of shitty movies and sitcoms. So, I mean, there you have it, folks. Politics is the key to human flourishing. That's it. Government is nothing but an institution full of faithful, charitable, loving public servants. Just want the and populace. you just have to elect the right ones and everything's going to be fixed. Because God forbid. To be so healthy. God forbid you ever spend one of your own hard-earned dollars giving it directly to somebody that you find to be in need. God forbid you ever do that. Don't you citizen. understand that politicians need your money too? They're they're almost they're not elected. Politicians are, next are election. politicians are hurting right Don't now. You understand? While, if they lose. While you were while you were out of work, lose. while you were out of work for 8 months and the politicians voted to give you 1200 bucks in total for 8 months. They fought for you. While they handed it out to some of the richest zip codes in the country and they bailed out mega shh, corporations shh, and everything shut else. Up. Didn't shut the fuck up. Um, they fought for you and the $1,200 that definitely paid for four months of your fucking quarantine. You were, you were that close to utopia, people. That's all it took. God damn it. What? Dane. David. Like, seeing as this is the last, Listen, last episode of our podcast, because we've solved all the world's just vote You don't Democrat. feel so bad about going over on time? No. It's no. our last. Because we'll get the PPPPPPP loan the next time that it comes out, because they care so much about Listen, our hunger. David, I despise these people. Well, of course you do. I despise... And I, I, I'm, I'm out of words. words. You're, I, which is the like the, one of three times I've ever seen you like this, and I kind of want to revel in it. But to pull you out of it, and I'll remind you of it later. Where can they find this podcast? To to really well done sink their teeth into well you know curing world hunger. Where you, where can they find out exactly how to cure you world kn hunger? You knew what I needed right when I needed it. I, yeah. So, come find this episode, wmdpodcast.com backslash 19. Find it on YouTube. Just search WM, or just search Weapons of Meme Destruction. You'll find all of our episodes there. Um, Maybe you'll find a dick pic. I don't know. <laughs> we hope not. Uh, try not to get deplatformed this early on. Uh... <laughs> I mean, find it on all of your, and your only fans find it on WMD all of your podcast. podcast apps make sure to like share subscribe on every piece of get all of media. your family to listen to it or we'll find you and hunt you down like these yeah. rabid definitely not and, democrats will and as we go into thanksgiving week well be thankful it's for after it's after thanksgiving i hope you had a great we hope you had a fantastic thanksgiving of 10 or more people no, 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 Dane, how dare you? I hope you had it less than eight. If there was a plus You selfish eight, pricks. I hope it was a fucking animal that definitely can't catch COVID or at least a baby that won't die from it. And I hope you enjoyed your dried turkey that was supplied to you by the government. Thank you, government. And uh, cranberry sauce that was definitely surprised. Surprised? Oh, surprise! I did not mean to and do that. Don't cancel me. Supplied. 
by the Democrats. And whatever you do, please, for the love of God, follow Mark Cuban's advice. Help people in your daily life. Spend dollars directly into the hands of people that need it, not on political races. That's how you're going to be the change that you want to see. Help Americans, not politicians. One hundred.